to be presenting this first analysis of the study called uh, Maya. Maya is, is, is lenalidomide dexamethasone versus daratumumab in combination with lenalidomide dexamethasone uh, in uh, newly diagnosed elderly patients with, with myeloma. So this is the rationale of the study. Uh, we know that lenalidomide and dexamethasone has been established as a sense of care for the elderly patients a few years ago. Uh, the study was called the first study and was presented at TASH Plenary in 2013. In the first study, the median PFS for lenalidomide and dexamethasone was 26 months. After the first study, uh, VRD was uh, investigated and is considered to be another standard of care based on several studies, including uh, one US study done in the elderly. And in this, this Fox study, the median PFS for patients over the age of 65 is 34 months. Uh, daratumumab in combination with lenalidomide and dexamethasone has also been uh, uh, used and approved in the, in the relapse uh, setting. Uh, the study was called the Pollux study. And uh, the median PFS for DRD in the relapse setting is quite impressive at 44.5 months. So finally, as I said before, this phase three Maya study, which is a very large uh, phase three international study, uh, evaluated DRD versus ARD for patients uh, who are transplant ineligible. So we report here the first uh, uh, pre-specified analysis of the study. So this is the study design. Uh, the study enrolled uh, 737 patients, so eligibility criteria are usual in this disease, so transplant ineligible patients, ECO 0 to 2, creatinine clearance over 30, uh, the control arm, as said before, is lenalidomide and dexamethasone, as it has been approved. Uh, daratumumab uh, in the DRD arm is delivered at the dose of 16 mg per kick weekly for the first two cycles, uh, every two weeks between cycles three and six, and then every four weeks. Both regimens are delivered until progressive myeloma, and the primary endpoint is progression-free survival with all other uh, uh, usual secondary endpoints. So this is the study population. The, the median age is 73 years. Uh, importantly, and as you can appreciate, 44% uh, of patients have an age over 75. So this is likely something extremely important. So in the vast majority of registration studies in myeloma, uh, we have approximately one third of patients with an age over 75. So we have in this study 10% more. Uh, otherwise, ECOG-2 was 17% uh, of patients, uh, ISS-3 was uh, about 30% of patients, and 14% uh, of patients had high-risk cytogenetics. Uh, DRD and ERD treatment arms were well balanced uh, regarding uh, characteristics. So this is the primary endpoint of PFS. So the median follow-up is 28 months. The study met its primary endpoints. The median PFS for the control arm is uh, 31.5 months, which is uh, significantly longer as we noted in the first study in the past. The hazard ratio is 0.56, and uh, as you can appreciate, the 30 months PFS is 71% for DRD versus 56% for the RD control arm. So this is the response rate. And uh, this is uh, uh, also shown here is, is MRD negativity. Uh, we, we got significantly higher response rates, including CR rate, VGPR rate, and MRD negative rate with DRD. Uh, in the DRD arm, 93% of patients achieve at least partial response, 48% of patients achieve complete response, and 79% of patients achieve at least very good partial response. 24% of patients uh, uh, achieve MRD negativity uh, in a very conservative way to assess MRD negativity. And uh, there was a great difference between uh, RD and, and DRD uh, for uh, MRD uh, as achievement. So safety was uh, uh, very manageable. And, and basically, we, we have to say that the safety profile is very consistent with findings coming from other studies having daratumumab combined with uh, standards of care, such as the Pollux study and the Alcyon study, which was the combination of daratumumab with VMP. Uh, looking at hematologic uh, adverse events, we got a little bit more neutropenia, grade 3, 4, 35% in the control arm versus 50%. Looking at non-hematologic toxicities, there is only one finding which is, uh, which is different. We got a little bit more pneumonia. The incidence of uh, grade 3, 
for pneumonia was 8% in the control arm versus 14% uh, in, the, in the DRD arm. Uh, the, the rate of infusion reactions uh, is, uh, uh, was as expected at 41%, uh, but very few patients had grade 3-4 infusion reactions. Uh, in incidence of SPM was very low, uh, 3 on, on, on 4% in, in DRD and ERD respectively, and very, very few patients had an hematologic SPM, so 0.5% uh, in each arm. Uh, finally, treatment emergent adverse events with outcome of death was 7% for DRD and 6% for ERD. So these are the conclusions. So DRD significantly reduced the risk of progression of death by 44% in patients with transplant ineligible newly diagnosed myeloma. DRD induced significantly deeper responses, including a threefold higher incidence of MRD negativity. No new safety signals were observed using DRD in newly diagnosed myeloma. So we believe that this study established DRD as a new standard of care for patients who are ineligible for, transplant, for autologous stem cell transplantation. Thank you.